Super 8 is something that I was intimidated by for a very long time before actually jumping in and starting to shoot it. So today I just wanted to tell you everything I know about my specific Super 8, how I get it processed and scanned, and what I do with the files to make them look beautiful. Um, let, me, let me show you a little bit of what I mean. Pretty beautiful, right? Well, this video has three sections. The first section is the cameras. This section is gonna be about my camera, its features, and some tips I have for shooting with Super 8 in general. All that footage you just saw was shot on this camera right here, the Bauer C1M Super. One of the things I was very conscious about when picking a Super 8 was picking one that was more of a point and shoot style of Super 8 rather than a professional Super 8. It has very few features, and that's what makes it lovely. There are quite a few different Super 8 cameras that have so many different features on them that it's overwhelming. And I personally just wanted one that had very few features that allowed me to point and shoot and get good, if not amazing, uh, footage out of it. Firstly, it's got a film running speed switch, which is pretty much a frame rate switch. You can choose 18 or 24 frames per second. 18 is the standard for Super 8 and you get a little over three minutes of footage. And if you switch it to 24, it'll eat through that footage a lot quicker and you'll only get about two minutes of footage so I personally recommend always shooting on 18 to get yourself a little bit more footage because when you're shooting motion picture film you want to take advantage of every single bit of that film that you have and shooting at 24 frames per second just is not worth it that minute that you lose when you shoot at 24 frames per second could be like 15 banger shots four frames per second could be like 15 banger shots if you just shot it at 18. Since we're talking about footage, next thing we're gonna look at is the footage counter. This counter pretty much tells you how much of your 50 foot roll you've used up. Keep in mind, if you take your cartridge out, it resets that counter. So if you wanna switch over to a black and white cartridge and blast some black and white, and you don't wanna forget how much of your film you've used up, you can take a sticky note or a piece of tape or something and write down how much of your film you've used up. So when you put that other cartridge in, you can reference your sticky note and just subtract that from 50, which is the standard amount of feet you get in one cartridge of Super 8. This camera has a power zoom switch which allows you to do very fluid, smooth zooming motions. The T and the W stand for tele and wide which means just zooming in and out of course. And it also has a zoom lever which allows you to do a lot more creative zooming options. You could do like a super punch in or a super zoom out. It, it's, it's just a little bit more creative and you may end up needing to use this manual zoom lever at some point because the motor inside of the power zoom switch has given up. If anything's gonna give up on this camera, it's gonna probably be the motor in this thing. Listen to it. Yeah, it, it's gonna be that or the whole camera is just gonna break. <laughs> Now on the lens, there are rangefinder markings so you can try to find your focus based on distance or you can set it to infinity. I found myself while on my road trip out in the Great Sand Dunes or in Utah, just leaving it on the infinity function because when I'm shooting something, everything's vast and out there way in front of me. It's not something that's right in my face that I might need to specifically focus on. So I was able to get away with that for a lot of the shots. But when I found myself shooting a subject up close, they ended up being out of focus on the infinity mode. So what I've started doing is zooming in all the way onto my subject, focusing on their face or whatever the subject is, and then zooming back out to whatever I wanna zoom back out to, and then shooting the shot. Zooming in allows you to get close focus and then you zoom out and just fire away. Oh, by the way, this little window on the side of your Super 8 camera is a window that allows you to view the film code on your Super 8 cartridge. This is very similar to the window that you can find on some 35 millimeter cameras so you can identify what roll of film you're shooting. And that's about it when it comes to the simplicity of a Super 8 like this one. Um, now, what about dropping it off at a lab or sending it off to a lab. I've personally only dropped off at two film labs here in Los Angeles, Last Good Film Lab and Spectra. And whenever I go to either of them, I ask for 4K flat scans. I usually ask for an overscan that looks like this. 
If you don't get an overscan, it'll look like this. So pretty much getting an overscan allows you to get that somewhat of a border and I think it looks pretty cool. But the reason I ask for flat scans is because I like to color grade my footage to make sure it looks really good. And also my Super 8 does not have a built-in 85 orange filter. Some Super 8s have an 85 orange filter that's built in that you can switch to when shooting tungsten in daylight to compensate for the fact that you're shooting tungsten in daylight. Uh, without the filter, tungsten film in daylight looks pretty blue, so scanning in a flat profile that's very color gradable allows me to warm it up and it just looks amazing. So I seriously recommend getting your motion picture film scanned in a flat profile when you get it developed and scanned. Okay, when I got my first roll of Super 8 back, I took a couple screenshots of different clips that I wanted to try color grading in Lightroom, and then I built a LUT around that in Lightroom and exported it. I named it Super 8. Uh, it pretty much works as a really good baseline for all of my um, Super 8 footage. So I just applied it to the adjustment layer above the Super 8 footage on this clip, and you'll see it's not perfect. It's got like a weird tint to it. So what we're gonna do is edit this Super 8 footage of the land is really quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my color board and I'm just gonna work with my exposure. Usually I like to have my highlights up and my shadows down until that border starts to fade into the black on either side, like right around there. And that already looks super sick, I think. Uh, if I take that away, you can see it's pretty different. Um, it's a little blue, like it's not that blue, but it's, it's a little blue. So what I'll do is I'll take the midtones and I'll make them a little bit warmer so maybe like right there, and then I'll start to play with the shadows a little bit. I'll add a little bit of red in, and then I'll go back to exposure and maybe drop the shadows again, make it a little bit cr <laughs> crunchier, I guess. I hate that word, but I'm gonna use it here. And then maybe raise the highlights again. So now when I play that clip back, it does have like a very faded, nice, super eight look to it. Um, and then when it gets closer, you can see it auto exposes on him. Um, yeah, that's pretty sweet. So yeah, usually you don't need to do much. Usually you kind of just have to make some exposure tweaks, which is essentially a tone curve to make it a little bit less flat and then mess around with the colors a little bit to warm it up and then it looks really good usually. Okay, the next two clips that I'm gonna try editing is this clip from Utah and this clip of my friend Kavya here in LA. Uh, as you can see, they both lean, well, the Utah clip leans very blue. It was 500T in the middle of the day. And then the Kavya one, it doesn't look like it's gonna need a ton of work, but obviously we're gonna need to bring some life into that. Uh, so for this first clip, I already have the color grade, the Super 8 color grade on top of it. And then I'm gonna go to the color board and I'm gonna do the same exposure adjustments that I did before. So I'm gonna bring up the highlights and bring down the shadows just so that I can start to see what detail was retained. This looks really sweet so far, just kind of bringing a curve into it. I'm gonna probably bring the midtones up a little bit because it was super bright. I kind of want like an overexposed, almost washed out look. Uh, and then I'm gonna go over to my color. I'm gonna mess with the midtones. I'm gonna make them warmer. Already looks really good. And then I'm gonna play with the shadows. Maybe add a little bit of greenish, green and red in there. Um, leaning towards green, I'm leaning toward red, 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 red. And then I'm gonna actually take some of the warmth out of it, bring the exposure up a little bit more and drop the shadows a lot more. And then you really start to see the detail of like where the shadows were on the rocks and stuff. This looks really cool. Um, let me see how this looks. I think that that looks perfect actually. I really like that. Cool, now let's edit the one of Kavya. Uh, again, shadows down. That immediately looks really sweet. I don't even know if we're gonna need to do a ton of warming up. And then I'm gonna bring the highlights up just a bit because as you can see, it starts to get a little too overexposed. Bring the shadows down again. Oh, that's so sweet. And then I'm gonna bring a little bit of warmth into it. That's really nice. And then I'm gonna maybe add a little green, mm, a little red. That looks perfect, let's see. Boom, that looks really nice. Uh, again, yeah, so I know I had a little bit of help from a LUT that I made specifically for my Super 8 footage. Play around with it a little bit, mess with your exposure, and uh, kind of try to find the best curve that you can to um, really make your footage pop. If you've edited videos in the past, uh, this should come pretty easily to you because it's no different than editing digital footage, to be honest. So yeah, that is the extent of my knowledge when it comes to shooting with Super 8. Uh, I don't have a big background in repairing them or knowing how to know whether or not they're broken, but uh, if you find one that works, if you get one that's working and tested off the bat, I hope you have a lot of good luck with it. And as always, I'm Linus, uh, and I guess I'll 
see you next week somewhere <laughs> bye